Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Breakdown Malcharmy Series Let's begin. In this video, I'm going to talk about Malcharmy. Break it down on how it works and how it will apply in Yu-Gi-Oh! With that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. Before I talk about Malcharmy, let's talk about the card it is based off of, which is Max C. Malcharmy is based off of the separate effects of Max C. Anyways, you can see Max C in front of you and you can see its effect. Let's go to the next slide and see the many areas, all the areas that uh, allow you to draw from Max C. Max C states that you can special summon, uh, you can draw a card every time your opponent special summons a monster. If we go to the next slide, we can see special summoning a monster or monsters from the hand, you draw a card. Special summon a monster from the extra deck, you draw a card. A special summon from the spell and trap zone, you'll draw a card. Special summon from the deck, you'll draw a card. A special summon from the graveyard, you'll draw a card. And a special summon from the banishment, or banish pile, as you can see there, you will draw a card. So all these areas, so how many areas, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six areas in Yu-Gi-Oh will give you access as the player who activated it, you know, are drawing a card. So more often than likely, you will have a big uh, card advantage when you activate Max C. And another thing as well that'll happen is with max c is that when you've activated it you are going to have a really ridiculous hand a very big hand and it's just overwhelming advantage and you generally win at that point let's go over and talk about uh a malchami card okay and so now i'm going to talk about malchami perelia talking about it coming out in infinite forbidden which is this week on the 18th so not too long or maybe it's come out now when this video has been uh you know printed anyways let's go on and read it and read its effect here you can only activate the effects of other malchami monsters once during the turn you activate this card's effect one if you control no cards quick effect you can discard this card apply this effects for the rest of this turn each time your opponent normal or special summons a monster from the hand, draw one card. During the end phase, if you have more cards in your hand than the number of cards your opponent controls, plus six, shuffle random cards from your hand equal into the deck equal to the difference. Before we uh, continue, let's go over and to go to the next slide and see where the areas are located. And it says here that um, with Malchami Perelia, it's, we can see here it states normal or special summon monsters or monsters from the hand draw a card. So any normal or special summon from the hand, you will draw with Perelia. The difference is here is that you're not going to draw you as much if you activate this card. And unlike Max C, you have to control no cards to activate this card. So that also means that you can't just activate it straight away. That's another thing. And so what is meant by equal to the difference? Well, allow me to explain. The hand size limit is six in Yu-Gi-Oh. So that's what the plus six is there for. And so when it says the opponent controls, let's say that means what's in your opponent's field. So when you feel in your opponent's field, they control two cards. So in the end phase, you will be allowed to have eight cards in your hand. Okay. And if you have more than eight cards in your hand in the end phase, you will shuffle the remaining, the, the extra cards and keep eight. If they have three cards, then you will keep nine. If they will have four cards, you will keep, get to keep 10. You get their general idea. If they have five cards, you'll get to keep 12. Uh, 6 plus 6, 12. If they have 7 cards, you'll get to keep 13. If they have 8 cards, you'll get to keep 
14. You get the general idea. So I think the max is 16, whatever it is. But you get the general idea. You get to keep as many cards as, your po as the amount the opponent controls. Pretty interesting. But there we go. Let's go over to the next Malcharmy and see how that goes. Okay, let's talk about this Malcharmy. Malcharmy Fueros. So, um, let's go over its effect. You can only activate one other Malcharmy monster effect. The turn you activate its effect. One, if you control no cards, quick effect, you can discard this card. Apply this effects this turn. Each time your opponent special summons a monster from the deck and or extra deck, immediately draw one card. Once, during the end phase, if the number of cards in your hand is more than the number of cards your opponent controls, plus six, you must randomly shuffle cards from your hand into the deck. So the number in your hand equals the number your opponent controls, plus six. Again, the exact same restriction uh, or clauses as Pirelia. Let's go to the next slide to see where you special summon from. So if we can, you can see here from the zones, your special, every time you'll activate this card, you'll special summon, you'll draw a card from the extra deck and from the deck. So every time your opponent special summons from the extra deck, you draw a card. Every time you special from the deck, as indicated here, you draw a card. And like before, if they control two cards, you get to keep eight cards. If, if they control three cards, you get to keep nine. That's how it goes. Four, you get to keep ten. You get the general idea. Exactly the same as they said with Pirelia. This is this is where Fioros is much, much stronger than Pirelia because normal or special summoning from the hand doesn't really hap uh, does is not really common in Yu-Gi-Oh. While it is there, uh, you they're not really a lot of decks do it, but they don't do it as much. So you won't get a lot of draws. So it's sort of balanced but with fioros every deck in Yu Gi Oh special summons from the extra deck and so you will be getting a lot of draws at that point this is where it's a bit controversial as people will say but throughout this video i'm going to talk about some other Malchami cards these are made up really and these are sort of like guessing or just approximating the sort of Malchamis we might get in the near future okay We'll see how that goes. But anyways, that's it. So let's go over to some of the other Malchamis. And these are Malchamis I feel that we'll be getting in the future. They may have this effect, but you get the flavor text that they'll have. So let's continue. Alrighty, let's talk about it. We have this Malchami on the field that you can see in front of you. So it's, uh, it's called Malchami Zigabyte. With the following effect, you can only activate one other Malchami monster effect. The turn you activate this effect. One, if you control new cards, quick effect, you can discard this card, apply these effects this turn. Each time your opponent special summons a monster from the graveyard and or spell or trap zones, immediately draw one card. Again, we see the exact same clause as all of them once during the end phase, if the number of cards in your hand is more than the number of cards your opponent controls, plus six, you must randomly shuffle cards from your hand into the deck. So the number in your hand equals the number your opponent controls, plus six. Let's go to the next slide. And we can see here, and you'll activate this every time your opponent will special summon from the graveyard and or spell or trap zones. Why did I specify every scene this made up card that I specify spell or trap zones? Because we've ha we have Snake Eyes, and they are a deck that we can see special summon from spell, have a monster special summon from spell or trap zones, and I think that could be a common thing in Yu-Gi-Oh going forward, and Konami may want to address it and have a Mal Charmy that has an effect that addresses this area of special summoning from. So that's why... I have this Malchami with that effect. You would still be able to draw, you know, a couple of cards. It wouldn't be as much. It would be quite similar to Pirelia in a way. It would it would not be as crazy and it wouldn't happen as much. But in certain formats, it may be useful depending on what you feel is right. Anyway, so let's carry on to the last Malchami and another one that I've made up. And we'll talk about it. Let's carry on.
Okay, and here we have the last Malchami. We have Malchami Derecho. Um, so what's its effect? Like all of them, you can only activate one other Malchami monster effect. The turn you activate its effect, one. If you control new cards, quick effect, you can discard this card, apply these effects this turn. Each time your opponent special summons a monster from the banishment, immediately draw one card. Once during the end phase, if the number of cards in your hand is more than the number of cards your opponent controls, plus six, you must randomly shuffle cards from your hand into the deck. So the number in your hand equals the number your opponent controls, plus six. So let's go to the next slide showcasing where, where it specifies the banishment. The banishment is a term, the banish, the banish zone, that is what is the official term Konami has given the banished zone called banishment. Anyways, that's where you special summon from. So every time a uh, monster is special summoned from this zone, the banishment, you get to draw one card. So again, it's something that happens in Yu-Gi-Oh now quite often. Not so often, it's sort of mid-range. It happens sometimes, but not all the time. Again, I feel it's very similar to Pirelia, where it, hap it happens enough times where it's going to be strong but not too strong you'll get to draw cards but not an excessive amount so definitely i feel it's a zone or area that konami will mention or put on a Pirelia in the future okay and with that being said let's enter the conclusion and my thoughts about Malchami. okay so those are all the Malchamis, and we talked about maxi what it is based off of so what is my thoughts on it? Well, my thoughts on uh, Malcharmy are they're going to be um, balanced cards. And they're going to be healthy cards for Yu-Gi-Oh! One of the things that's going to happen, especially in TCG before, is I feel by the end of the year, we're going to lose Appaloosa. If it's not this next list in October, it'll be a list by the end of the year. Definitely, Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess, is going to be banned. What does this have to do with Appaloosa? I mean, not with Appaloosa, but with the Malchamis. Well, the Malchamis here are supposed to stop combo decks from getting out of control. One of the reasons why the Malchamis are there to begin with is because combo decks, especially with how Konami is making them, is completely out of control because they have strong, in my opinion anyway, they have strong end boards, right? The end boards are absolutely insane. But if the generic negates are gone, then you don't need as many uh, hand traps to, just, uh, to stop the best decks. Because in my eyes, it's not the deck strength that's the problem. It's not the deck's uh, play styles or special summoning that's the problem. It's the end board. It's the generic negates that are the problem. You look at Appaloosa and just on its own, it's able to negate four, uh, four you know, monster effects. That is a lot, man. That is a lot of effects that one card is able to negate. And it promotes drawing the out. And so what Bolchami does is if, if by not if by some miracle, but let's say we get rid of Appaloosa, Maltrami is there to keep combo players or keep the game in check. Where if something else is released in the future, you can pump a Maltrami there, you can only use it going second. And it's just there, just in case something will go wrong, something will go pear-shaped, you can slip it in. Hopefully, in my eyes, it should be like Droll and Lockbird. It'll be a sign of when the game uh, is not in the best place. We will be seeing Malchami, we will be seeing Droll and Lockbird. These should not be cards that we should technically see all the time, but we will see sometimes. Because if we remove, in my opinion, the generic negate cards in the extra deck, then we should not be seeing the Malchami family in the game that often because you wouldn't need you wouldn't need it in the game that often the current hand traps we would have would be enough that's all i've got to say about this matter we come to the end of this video 
So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.